Hi guys. This is a magical place, isn't it? This really nice broken off old tree with the owl nest in. Fantastic scene. And this. Altman's beard. And this is going to kick off my new playlist with a series of small films about the wild foods and medicines of the boreal forest. So let's go and do that. So I would really like to start off with, um, with stressing that you should not use any plants. You should not eat them or use them on, or for treatments or whatever. If you're not absolutely sure that you can identify the species, uh, there is a lot of really good stuff out here in the woods, but there is also a lot of poisonous stuff. So know what you're doing, don't try, don't experiment, look it up. There is a lot of information on all this. So I'm not recommending you to just go out and, and try stuff out. I show you what I know and uh, you can take that in as information and some of the things I will tell you are particularly useful in survival situations but it's really a good thing to to practice practice the identification of species go out there and uh, and learn learn your plants okay so I was going to start with uh, the old man's beard Altman's beard is a lichen. Uh, lichen a, a lichen is a, a symbiotic life form between algae and uh, fungi. This particular one is a is a very yeah hair-like structure. It's not really strange to see where it g got its English name. And uh, this one is for uh, for us in bushcraft and survival really really uh, useful. First of all. When dry, this is a perfect tinder. You can, it will catch a spark from a, from a fire steel or whatever, but then it must be really dry. On the medicinal front, uh, very many lichens have uh, really nice medicinal properties, but this one ha is, is documented to have antibacterial and antiviral properties. And uh, what, what was done? was quite often uh, in people with large war wounds to use this as a dressing to dress the wound with it to prevent gangrene and infection. On the survival front as food this can be the only thing that you can find in these areas when it's winter. You have to picture this area with one and a half meters of snow with on the bottom a very hard layer of ice you will not be able to get to any vegetation so the only thing you will find in the way of vegetation will be old man's beard hanging from the trees um, most lichens and this one in particular they have they have a special kind of starch those the starch in lichen is not not the kind of carbohydrate that our bodies readily take up uh, although when you start eating them your body gets used to it and you will be able to at most get about 50 percent of the energy from the old man's beard or any other lichen that can be eaten um, the thing is that they they don't really taste good most lichens also have an acid and the it's the acid that has uh, uh, that has the medicinal properties, but it, it prevents you from, from, from eating a lot of it because it's a really bitter taste. A further complication is that this is really light, light as a feather, and you need about 250 grams to, to cover your minimal daily need of energy. Uh, from carbohydrates, so that would be about 2,100 uh, kilojoules. That means that you need to munch through about five liters of this stuff to get your minimum uh, amount of, 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 of energy that you require. Well, that is, that is impossible. I mean, this you cannot eat it, you will get sick from it eating it like this. So, what you have to do 
as with uh, many many wild foods is to remove the bitter taste and you do that by leaching you can leach in many different ways uh, one way is to put this in water and let it stand for about yeah two days I would say two 48 hours and in between you have to refresh the water a lot of times that's a long process you can make that a, a lot faster by leaching it with lye and you can create your own lye by gathering the ashes from your campfire if you have been burning in these areas uh, birch wood it's the only thing you can use birch wood you gather the ashes and you take one part of ash on one part of water volume parts and you cook that for about two hours after two hours you will sieve the ash away and the, the liquid that you have uh, left that's a lye solution you should boil this in that for I would say any, anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour, two hours and that will very effectively remove the bitter taste and make it fit for consumption. Afterwards of course take out the, the lichen and, and really clean it good with fresh water. Uh, you don't want the lye in, in, into, the, into the food of course. You can also leach food chemically and um, the most effective chemical for that is uh, sodium carbonate, washing, washing soda. And you only need about two, two uh, tablespoons, two, two, three tablespoons of, uh, of washing powder on a liter of water. And then you put this in and let it stand for, uh, for 40 minutes. Or if you're cooking it, you can, it's actually uh, in a matter of minutes. But yeah, leave it cooking for a while at least. It also it also works with uh, with sodium bicarbonate, which is baking powder. But then you have to put in more of it uh, to get uh, an effective solution. This is Cetraria Islandica, Iceland moss. So Iceland moss is a. Uh, a very useful uh, lichen. It has been used in the, in the former times to, to as a substitute or an additive, uh, an extra additive uh, for starch when when uh, when flour and so on was was hard to come by. This particular lichen has about 70% of lichen in it. Lichen in is this, the, the the specific starch that that you can find in lichen. It's called moss, but it isn't. It is, it is really a lichen. Also, this one is uh, pretty bitter. You have to leach this. Um, the, the medical properties are, are uh, somewhat uh, disputable, but uh, it was traditionally used for chest ailments. They also have the, a lot of the acids that, that lichen have that are antibacterial. So. Uh, not a sure immediate medical use, but certainly uh, in a survival situation, a great, uh, a great source of carbohydrates. And as with all the lichens, don't go around harvest these. These are much less common than the old man's beard. So that is just for, uh, yeah, for real emergency situations. Here we have a patch of uh, rock tripe. Rock tripe is in the, uh, in the genus of the Umbilicaria. Uh, this is also a lichen. Um, they, they grow on, on rocks. And this one has an enormous advantage that you can actually eat them without leaching, but it's best to leach anyway. Their, uh, their medical properties have been uh, have been investigated for a long time, especially their antiviral and antibacterial properties. But as a food, this can be absolutely brilliant. There is a, there is a story about a Canadian expedition in the 19th century that actually survived 30 days with this as their only food source. And this can be actually found in the winter on, on, on like clips, like that aren't, that aren't covered with snow. So, 
a tremendously important survival um, uh, item this. Otherwise, just as other lichens, about 60 to 70 percent of li lichenin, which is starch. So uh, great for carbohydrates. Right. Well, the filming was cut short a bit because of the the rain. <laughs> But I covered the three uh, most important lichens, and uh, yeah, the next film I will cover three very common berries, and uh, now in the late August it's the time for them, and uh, that will be the the bilberry, uh, the lingonberry, and the crowberry. So see you in that one. <laughs>